brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Well done. Thank you for turning up. This is fabulous. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, my name is Mark Thomas and welcome, welcome, welcome to our stand-up show for LGBT rights. And thank you very much for coming along. Um, we have got fantastic bill for you today. Uh, uh, also... <laughs> No, hang on, we've got nothing. Uh, there we are, we're back, 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 back. That's fantastic. As you can see, we are powered. Oh. <laughs> As, uh, harder. You're just going to have to cycle harder. Uh, have we got any. Sounds like a connection issue. Is it a connection? It's a power issue. It's a power. No, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. We just have to. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we are. Hopefully, no. <laughs> This that is, way. Keep turning that way. This is this is the most fantastic form of heckling. <laughs> it's like being heckled by electricity. Um, hopefully, though, we'll, I'll just shout until we get it back, um, and hopefully the, the bicycles will be able to generate this in a minute. Uh, we're, as, as you can see, we are powered, hopefully, by bicycles, so even our cycles are by today, and that's very, very important. Um, we have got when they're ready. They're searching. I'll tell you, I'll just, I'll just start. Uh, you all know why we're here. We're here because that actually human rights count. Because human rights are important and because they affect all of us and they are universal. They apply to everyone. And I am someone who was brought up in the 80s and that's when I cut my political teeth and that's when I learned that the slogan that means most is an injury to one, is an injury to all. And all of us have to write, fight for each other's human rights. Thank you. <laughs> the cyclists are now looking relieved. The burden of the gig was on their shoulders for a moment there. Um, I'm going to just, I'm going to quickly tell you a couple of gags and then we're going to introduce the lineup. We've got an amazing bill for you. Uh, we've got Susan Cameron, we've got Joe Lightett, we've got Dana Alexander, we have got Zoe Lyons, we've got Stephen K. Amos, we've got Chris Coltrane, we've got speakers from Equality Network and then it all finishes in some kind of mass, possibly naked action. <laughs> Almost, almost, almost. Um, for those of you who can who can hear me, uh, this is I did a book. I went round Britain a few years ago, asking people to come up with policies to make the world a better place. And each night we put the audience will put in policies, and we would uh, discuss the policies, we would vote on the policies, and we try and find policies to improve our lives. And one of, one of the great things, you would often find that there was a link between the place that you were working at and the ideas that they voted for for the manifesto. In Leicester, they voted their favourite policy that all future monarchs should be buried in secret and at random in car parks. <laughs> in Hull, they voted, and you could hear the northern contempt dripping from every word, the whole policy was it should be legal for us to take fashion designers outside and bash them into the shape they think we're in. <laughs> we had, in Glasgow, the, the policy was bacon free on prescription. <laughs> Rolling back the boundaries of preconception and stereotypes. In Edinburgh, the policy that they voted for was for a money back guarantee on strike action. So if you went on strike but lost, you'd get the money you would get had you gone into work. <laughs> We've had lots of brilliant uh, policies, some of them about politicians. Uh, there was one that Michael Gove shouldn't be able to abolish a qualification unless he's passed it first. Uh, there was another one that George Osborne drives a bus at 30 miles an hour. If Britain's credit rating goes below AA, the bus explodes. Uh, there was one for David Cameron, which was all future MPs should have a face that fits their head. Anyway. <laughs> There are lots and lots of lovely, beautiful, wonderful policies. In Crawley, five months ago, they voted to give the Isle of Wight to Argentina. <laughs> so there's a whole range of policies that got voted on. And I'm pleased to say there's a massive amount that were about social justice. In Cardiff, they voted that anyone found guilty of a homophobic hate crime should serve their entire sentence in drag. <laughs> We had a lovely policy uh, that was voted for that all members of the British Nationalist Party, I think this applies to any variation of the EDL, uh, should be forced to trace their family ancestry and publish it. 
because I think one of the great things about living here is the fact that we are a mishmash of folk. Ever since these islands have emerged, people have come to it. We've had Celts, we've had Anglos, we've had Saxons, we've had Vikings, we've had Normans, we've had Romans. We have had every combination. The first black people came to this country with Roman legions. We are a multicultural nation. We are a hodgepodge nation and much the better for it. So if you're going to come up with some crazed idea that there is one such a thing as the purity of British bloodline, and two, that this pure bloodline means you actually love the country more than anyone else, then you better be pure. Because a lot of these BNP, they come over here. <laughs> one of my favourite, I'll tell you two of my favourites, and I'll, I'll get one of my, my, the woman who I'm in love with at the moment on stage for you. And uh, you look rather, oh no, it's great, it's flirt action. Um, <laughs> One of my favourite ones was from uh, North London where they voted that all models should be chosen at random from the electoral register. <laughs> and I love that idea because it completely rewrites our narrow-minded vision of eroticism and beauty. It means that actually if you're an advertiser you can't go, I want a skinny woman with big breasts. You have to say, I want a model. And we will say, we will get the electoral register and a massive tombola. <laughs> and we will pick up random. Any one of us could be the model. I could be the model. And the people doing the modelling will be informed of their assignment the same way people get told about jury service. <laughs> so I'll just get a little letter in the post and I'll be sitting there at breakfast going, bloody hell, I'm doing Calvin Klein tomorrow. <laughs> one of my favourites, and it's always been one of my favourites, was, um, oh, there is actually a lovely one here, uh, that says, um, it's got voted, I've forgotten where it got voted on, but it said, all police officers should wear badges with I'm here to help. Which, <laughs> I, I want to say, actually, this is, don't say this too loudly. I've never said this before. But thank you to the police officers for helping us facilitate this demo and gig here. Seriously, don't say I said that or I'll sue. I mean it. I, I, I was talking to one cop, he was so nice. He, he was just so nice and pleasant. I was sitting there just thinking, well, there's the act gone down the drain. So, one of my favourite ones that we voted on when it was voted on in six different places was for equal marriage that we should have equal marriage and I'm really proud of the fact that we now do have equal marriage I know some people have always said no no you can't have equal marriage you can't have it you can't have it Mark because it's unnatural and to those people I say no I'll tell you what's unnatural UHT milk <laughs> That's unnatural. Two people loving each other is entirely natural. Three, even more so in South London. <laughs> Some people go, no, Mark, we can't have uh, equal marriage because it will undermine traditional marriage. And to those people, I go, no, what undermines traditional marriage is married people shagging people they are not married to. <laughs> and you cannot blame the gays for that without a very elaborate conspiracy theory and possibly state-of-the-art prosthetics. <laughs> Some people say, no, Mark, we can't have. Equal marriage because God forbids it. And they will quote Leviticus. And the section they'll quote is Leviticus 20, chapter 20, verse 13, which says, If a man lies with the man as with the woman, both of them shall have committed an abomination. Leviticus 20, verse 13. If a man, like, quite obvious, God does not like gays. If a man lies with the, obviously this applies to gay men, lesbians, you're in the clear. <laughs> That's your Bible, that's your rule book, that's your instruction manual, that's what you believe. However, Leviticus also says that any woman menstruating should be kept separate for seven days. And on the eighth day she shall cleanse herself by sacrificing two pigeons. <laughs> Leviticus 15 verse 29. Two pigeons, very specific, not one, not three. And it's a pigeon, not a chicken, not a hen, it's not a, it's not a swan if you're the queen, I've just come off, will you burn it? You know, it's not that. <laughs> The pigeons will be killed by a priest who shall wring their necks at the altar and then burn the featherless fowl at the east side of the altar. Not the south, not the north, not the west, not mass great pillow fight, no. Burning the fowl at the east side of the altar. Very, very, very clear. Despite these clear instructions, I have yet to find people campaigning for free pigeons with every box of Tampax. <laughs> if you want to follow the Bible, your church should smell like a grease fire in Nando's. <laughs> Now we have got an amazing bill for you today and I want you to clap and welcome and cheer every performer who comes up here and we're going to start with the most wonderful, you're just too gorgeous, too gorgeous. Please welcome the wonderful Susan Kalman. Hello. Even though I'm standing on a box I'm aware of the fact many of you
you can't see me, I apologise. It's also the only time I've been this close to a sweating man in a very long time. <laughs> Handsome. Um, this is just, uh, I'm not really going to do any jokes because, oh my god, this is actually the most remarkable thing that I've ever been part of. This is so beautiful, thank you all so much. I, uh, I grew up in Glasgow in the 1980s. It just wasn't the easiest place to grow up. It was uh, as easy as being a vegan in an abattoir, being a lesbian. And uh, I went on my very first Pride March and realised what it was to have support. And so many of you come gay, straight, LGBT, two lovely people from the Fred Macaulay audience have come. You're not even from Scotland, you're on holiday and bless them, they've come. Give them a round of applause for God's sake. Say, comedians have very few talents apart from the ability to stand still and say things and this is what we're doing today and the main thing is trying to get the mainstream media trying to get everybody talking about what's happening in Russia so that people understand growing up with section 28 which is in no way the equivalent of what's happening there was difficult if I hadn't found a teacher who was brave enough to tell me I was okay I don't know what would have happened to me and we need to support people in other countries because I don't want anyone to ever go through what I went through when I was growing up and everyone told me it was wrong. And the Conservative government tried to stop information getting to people like me who, to be honest, are just the same as everybody else. And in terms of the equal marriage thing, it's not quite legal here yet. And the other thing we need to do is keep hammering on to Holyrood to get that bill passed so that I can marry my wife as soon as it's humanly possible. This is like, it's very odd. Anyone that's ever seen me on stage thinks that I'm one hell of a bolshy Glaswegian lesbian, and I am. But I'm also someone who's hugely affected by the kindness of humanity of others. And all of you coming here today is just the most beautiful thing. Oh God almighty. <laughs> and we just need to keep shouting back to Russia and say to them that it's not acceptable. Thank you all so much and I apologise for getting upset but thank you all so much for coming. Susan Kalman, you will not see a performance nor speech like that often my friends.